Uswatul Muslima presents Storytime Seerah Series The Forefathers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Part 7 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim The story of the people of the elephants is a very famous story. Allah Ta'ala speaks of the story in the Quran Majid in Surah Fil. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil fil. Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil wa arsal alayhim tayran ababil tarmihim bi hijaratin min sijjil faj'alahum ka'asfin ma'kun. This story happened about two months before Rasulullah was born, in the time when Abdul Muttalib was the leader of the Quraysh. The story starts with a man named Abraha. He was a Christian man who was the ruler in the land of Yemen. He saw that every year all the Arabs from different places would travel and go to the house of Allah Ta'ala, the Kaaba, to perform Hajj. When Abraha saw this, he built a big fancy church in Yemen and decorated it to make it look very beautiful. He wanted this church to be the new Kaaba and wanted all the Arabs to come to it to make Hajj. But the Arabs had very, very deep love for the Kaaba because it is the house of Allah Ta'ala. So when they heard about Abraha's new church and that he wanted them to come to his church for Hajj instead of the Kaaba, they became very upset. Then one day, a young Arab boy went to Abraha's church and used it as a toilet, making a mess inside. This made Abraha very angry. In fact, he was so mad that he decided to take a whole army with powerful elephants and break the Kaaba. Abraha took his army with the elephants and marched to Makkah Mukarramah. When he reached Makkah Mukarramah, his army saw all the nice camels of the Arabs grazing outside Makkah Mukarrama and took them away stealing them. The people in Makkah were worried, but Abdul Muttalib told them, Don't worry, nobody can destroy and break the Kaaba. It is Allah Ta'ala's house, so Allah Ta'ala will look after it. Abdul Muttalib then went to Abraha and asked him to give him his camels back. Abraha was very surprised and said, You are asking for your camels, but you are not asking me anything about the Kaaba, which is very important to you. Abdul Muttalib replied, I am the owner of the camels. That is why I am asking for my camels. Allah Ta'ala is the owner of the Kaaba, and he will look after it. Abdul Muttalib then instructed the people to go away to the top of the mountains because Abraha was coming to break the Kaaba. Before leaving, Abdul Muttalib went to the door of the Kaaba with a few people and made dua to Allah Ta'ala, begging him to protect the Kaaba. As Abraha's army went towards the Kaaba, Allah Ta'ala sent flocks of small birds that carried stones in their beaks and claws. These birds dropped the stones on the army of Abraha and through the power of Allah Ta'ala, these stones destroyed the army of Abraha. Allah Ta'ala then made Abraha become very sick. There were sores all over his body, making his body rotten, blood and pus were leaking out of his body, this sickness finally caused him to die. After Abraha and his evil army were all dead, 
Allah Ta'ala sent a flood of water that washed all their bodies away into the ocean, leaving the land of Makkah Mukarramah clean once again. This was how Allah Ta'ala saved the Kaaba from Abraha and his elephants in the time of Abdul Muttalib, just before Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. The first lesson that we learn is that just as the Kaaba is the house of Allah Ta'ala, the masjid is also the house of Allah Ta'ala. We must respect every masjid, keep it clean, not make noise or play in the masjid, and love the masjid. If we are boys, then when we are old enough, we must go to the masjid for salah. We also learn that Allah Ta'ala is most powerful and strong. When Allah Ta'ala wants to protect something, then nothing can hurt it and harm it. That is why when Abraha tried to destroy the Kaaba, then although he had a powerful army with elephants, he could not do anything. In fact, Allah Ta'ala used tiny birds and small stones to destroy the big elephants and the strong soldiers. This shows us how powerful Allah Ta'ala is. So we must always ask Allah Ta'ala to protect us, because if He protects us, nobody can hurt us. The end.